everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, this is part one of my uh, build of this Revell 144 scale Saturn V um, Apollo rocket. Um, if you're an experienced modeler um, and you're not really interested in this type of thing, you may not want to watch because I don't think you're going to learn a lot. Um, there's not much to it, it's just basically assembling a load of tubes and sticking them on top of each other really. Um, and then there's going to be some masking and painting. Mainly this is aimed at um, people who are into this sort of thing, into Apollo Saturn V rockets or any sort of space machines if you like. Um, and also beginners. Uh, if you're a beginner that isn't particularly interested in this but you want to learn about seams and everything, this is a great video for you to watch because Really, this is all about seams. It's sticking tubes together, sticking them end on end, and that's it. And every single one's got a seam. Uh, it's also a fairly old kit, fairly old, 1968. So it's, what is it, 51 years old. Um, it's nearly as old as me. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an old kit. The molds are old. It's going to need a bit of work, a bit of fettling, a bit of filler, some rubbing down. And also, if you've watched my review on this, you'll see that one of the things I've noticed, everybody that builds this kit, it kind of has on the ribbed sections here the kind it's, it's kind of like this rather than round it's like this and if you look at my review we look at and uh, and discuss why um so basically um yeah if you're if you're into this sort of stuff and you know a lot about it and there's some simple mods i can make so i mean not not going to spend money on resin and aftermarket and stuff i mean you know if you to accurize it cut that lump off and move it around there because that's the wrong place that kind of thing is what I'm talking about. I'm not interested in upgrading it, updating it and making it accurate for Apollo 11 as it was on such and such a time and all that. Um, I am sort of normally that way inclined, but with this particular model, I'm not. I've also got the 96th scale. I've ordered the new wear up market set. So that one will be a different story. Um, so basically the first thing I've done, as I do with Revell kits now after being suggested by one of my subscribers, thank you very much. Sellotape the ends up and cut the top open, stick a piece of flutter cardboard inside so that it doesn't fall in all the time. And then you've got like a normal top opening model box you can work with then, rather than trying to get everything out the ends all the time. Um, and if you are new to my channel, I'm also doing a build along on the uh, this one. This is the Revell Junkers JU88. And that one, there's a few of us, we're basically building it together step by step. So I do a bit and then you follow on sort of the few days, a week, whatever after. And, um, and then I do another bit and you do the same again. Some people are going on ahead and some people are actually staying with me and, uh, and building along. Um, that's not what this is all about. This is all just about me building this. I want this on my mantelpiece. So there we go. So, um, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll get on with it now. I'm not going to follow the build sequence in the instructions, uh, basically because um, the first thing I'm going to work on is this area here and the exhaust. The exhaust nozzles are the first thing in the instructions, but certainly the um, the command module and the support module aren't um, aren't part of the uh, first stage instructions. But this is all silver, so. One of the reasons I want to get all this done and get the seams done is because if we have to use any sprue goo or fillers or whatever, I want to give them plenty of time to harden off and, and go off because if you use a lot, sometimes the seams will tend to shrink. Um, and I don't want that happening after it's painted silver. So I want to make sure that's done. So I've got time to build all this. And then by the time I come to that section to paint it, then it would have all shrunk and done whatever. Um, I could use super glue as a filler. I don't like using super glue as a rule um, for anything really because it's very very brittle and hard and I just, I just don't like using it. I've seen people use um, super glue with uh, acrylic powder and stuff. I'd much rather use um, you know Mr. Surfacer and, um, and, and sprue glue to be quite honest. So uh, I'll get this um, D bag and get the parts out that I need and uh, I'll make a start. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've got my uh, parts laid out here for um, step one, and I'm going to be gluing these together. So we've got to make five of these. These are the stage one um, rocket engines. They basically and, and nozzles. They go on, on the on the very base of the rocket. It's what it's the, the the base is designed so they sit through these holes, 
Um, one of mine is snapped off here. I'm basically going to probably not use this. I may even get a, a LUT for it, we'll see. So we've got parts one and two, and then the difference is one's got the lugs on, one hasn't. Um, and then when we put them together, we can clearly see that the pins are actually not helping us line up very well at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove these um, location pins from here on all of them. And then that's going to help me get everything lined up properly. Um, the other thing you'll probably notice, I haven't washed these parts. I would normally wash my parts in soapy water before I start. This kit is going to have so much work done on the seams and everything that I really see no point in, um, in doing any work now on, uh, on cleaning it because I'm just going to be handling it and sanding it so much. So what I'll do is once it's, um, once it's all sanded and everything's all ready for paint, then I'll, I'll give it a wash then. I'll probably wipe it down with some alcohol or something just to make sure the paint sticks okay, um, which is the only reason you wash them really. It's for the painting, not the, uh, not the gluing. So um, now with those pegs removed, I'm able to put these together and hold them and slide them around where I want them to get perfect alignment because really the, I'm, I'm more interested in the alignment of these ribs here than I am in anything up here because this is going to be a lot more obvious on the finished model and also when you look here we can see inside it's pretty rough no point in doing anything about that now we may as well deal with that when it's all um when it's all glued together um, what we can do if we want to is just go in and remove the part number um, if you if, if you're that way inclined uh, maybe better to use a curved blade actually a blade like this and just shave that number off um, But then who's gonna be looking at the exhaust nozzles anyway, if you're gonna display the model as it is at Cape Kennedy Let out then inside these nozzles nozzles are gonna be important, but uh, if you're not then I wouldn't worry so um So basically I'm gonna put these together and I can see they're not perfectly flat so I'm gonna get a large flat sanding stick which is coarse-ish, it's not, not overly coarse, and just gently rub away on this surface until the whole area is cleaned up. You'll see what a lot of people do. Now we can see there's an ejector pin there, that's what's causing the problem, um, which is actually protruding on both of them, so it's holding them apart. Um, what you see a lot of people do, they'll put a piece of um, emery down or a piece of wet and dry down on the, on the bench like this, and then they'll start rubbing away. The problem with that is, the edges can often stick up and you end up making a concave face. So I would rather hold the part like this and then gently rub a sanding stick over the surface until I get it all cleaned up. But with these, you see we've got this, i show you an untouched one. We've got an ejector pin mark there and an ejector pin mark there and they're both raised. So they're going to hold it apart. You're never going to get them together. So we need to get rid of those first. So I'm just going to scrape that away like that until it's gone. The finish doesn't particularly matter. Um, doesn't really matter how it looks because it's a glued together joint. No one's ever going to see it. It's going to be uh, in pitch darkness. And then I'm going to take my sanding stick and gently rub the surface of the part until the whole, we've got another ejector pin mark there, look. And I'm just going to rub the surface of the part until the whole thing is cleaned up. Now what you can do if you really want to is take a pencil. You could use a magic marker pen but probably better off using a pencil because magic marker seeps through all the paint. Now you can't see the pencil on there so we're gonna to have to use a magic marker and I'm just gonna go around like this on the edges, draw a line all around the edges like that and then I can sand it until that magic marker disappears on all the edges and then I know we're going to get a good seam. Okay now this, this is basic modelling principles this doesn't apply to this particular kit and that's exactly why where's the other one I did there it is um, doesn't necessarily apply to a just this Saturn 5 kit but it's why I said at the beginning if you're a beginner it's pretty good uh, 
it's going to be good stuff for you because this is going to be all about seams and some of these seams are in tricky places as you can see here I'm just going to rub this away now and you can see the magic marker has gone from there and there but it's still up around the top so and I'm really putting no pressure on at all uh, if I put pressure on I'll just distort the part and it's pointless the whole idea is to get this flat so that they go together beautifully okay there we go all around the edge the magic marker has gone now these two should fit together absolutely perfectly and hopefully all the molded on detail will line up not worried about the bottom edge what I'm worried about is these ribs everything else can go by the by blow the dust off and you can see that what I can do is now slide it around to get those ribs perfectly aligned because I don't have any pins in the way nothing's nothing's restricting me okay now I've done that I can take my extra thin this is my holder I've made piece of foam three 340 mil squares cut in it right through both sides and then I can put my uh, three glues in there and um, and I'm not going to knock them over so I'm just going to put some extra thin on like that um, not going to put the extra thin on first it's absolutely pointless because it dries out so I'm just going to put that in there and you can see the magic marker coming through which might end up being a mistake we'll see but we can see there straight away the moldings aren't that clever we can see that on this part on the right those actual ribs are thicker than the, 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 the ones on the left which is just the sort of thing you find in these really old kits and in some new ones as well but generally it's uh, it's in the older kits not in the newer ones and I'm going to give it a little squeeze together and that'll make any glue ooze out and there we go that's that side done now I need to take care of this side now you can see that I've got this side all nice and level and everything's in line but this side has got a step in it so what I'm going to do is wait for this side to go off so that side needs to dry and then I can pull this into shape and use some quick setting Tamiya Extra Thin, the, the lighter green one and glue that side with that one and that will hold it all together then in a circle rather than um, rather than risk pulling it all apart now so uh, I'll get on and do the others and glue down this side and then I'll come back to you um, the other thing you might be tempted to do here is think well I know what I'll do I'll put a rubber band around there and that'll hold it all together and the trouble with that is when you put the glue in the glue will capillary the capillary action will pull the glue into the rubber band and you'll end up ruining all your um, plastic around the outside so you can put rubber bands on after the glue after about 20-30 seconds but you can't put rubber bands on before you glue if you're using this stuff if you're using something like the Revell contactor like this one it's not too much to worry about you would put this on first with the needle all around the edge and then put the parts together but I personally and I think pretty much every modder on the planet prefers to use Tamiya Extra Thin so that's those gone together now I'm going to get the rest done and then I'll be back okay so um, I've glued these together now down one side and what I'm looking for is making sure that these ribs here are aligned so I want to make sure they're all sort of lined up on the side I've glued. The other side doesn't matter so much. So making sure they're all lined up and making sure there's no step on the outside. So you just basically slide your fingernail across both ways and you shouldn't feel a step either way. The large bit here doesn't matter. That's easy to clean up. It's, it's going to be getting these ribs cleaned up and getting rid of the seam between them. That's going to be the hard bit. And as you can see this side, it's um, it's got a great big step going that way no step going that way obviously we're going to just pull it into shape and then glue it after this this side has dried so um so i'm going to leave these to go off now for a while and uh and then come back um one little tip if you want to make sure that everything's in line if you get a steel rule and you just sort of push the parts together and roll the steel rule over it will it will help you get them in all in line and also on the grooves that way so um that's that done little sneak preview if you're thinking oh my god he started something else um, I'm sort of halfway through the last part of Monty's Humber build so there's a sneak preview for you of that car um, waiting for the clear coat to go off so I can put the decals on 
so we're nearly done on that one and it's looking lovely for such an old airfix model it looks lovely so uh yeah Russ, this is part 14. Right, so if you remember a few seconds, well, a while ago for me, a few seconds ago for you, I basically said I was going to build the um, command support module first uh, well, to get these seams done because this is going to get a lot of um, silver paint on it. So um, I've got the parts out, 37, 36, 38 and 39. So they're there and I've got the uh, these parts here ready to go in. Now there's no actual timing lugs or anything on these to make sure they go in the right way round um, or you know you need to make sure that the one with the disc goes at the top where these two hooks are so that one's going to go under there and as you can see in the instructions that arrow is showing you that it's going under under that flange so up under there rather than on top of it um, but also I've noticed on this one here um, probably doesn't really matter to me because I'm probably just going to glue it all together anyway and not have it coming apart but we've got ejector pin marks on this part if you can see them there you can see them there the lights, yeah the lights just picking them up there look if I put them at three and nine o'clock you can see them there so we're gonna have to get rid of them now they are very very shallow so they should just literally sand out with any luck um, and what I'm gonna do Again, I'm going to use a pencil. The reason I do this is if I if I colour over the top like this with a pencil, when I sand away, once I get rid of all the pencil, I know that the sand the sanding stick is contacting the whole area. So if I get pencil left behind, then I know that I've got some. It's all clogged up then I'm gonna to have to trim the end off and give it a fresh fresh a new leash of life so there we go so when I sand that away if I can see no pencil I know that I've got it flat so on there you can see that the pencils there if I just rub it a couple of times hopefully I can show you what's going on. you you know no it's not it's so shallow you can hardly see it but what you often see if the um, if the ejector pin mark is raised, you'll get a ring around the outside of it. And when the ring disappears, you know it's all flush. And if it's shrunk, you'll see pencil lines across the middle of it. And when it's gone, then um, you'll see again all the, when it's flush, all the marks are gone. So you can see there. There we go. The ejector pin marks are gone now. So that's all flush. And these sanding sticks, these are Flory sanding sticks. You get them from um, florymodels.co.uk. And he does a starter set of um, there's there's all these different sort of ones you can get. There's these soft blue sponges like this, and you can get the bigger sticks like this, and these big polishing sponges. And if you look at my videos, you'll see I use them in all of my videos. I, I, I love them. I think they're great. Um, and I'll be using them all through this build as well. So I've gone around the outside and removed the sprue nibs off of there and sanded them down. Now there's no ejector pin marks on there that's going to bother me, so that's okay. Now when I put these two together, I notice that once again, I have an issue in the, the actual location pins and holes they've given me are actually causing the parts to be misaligned. As you can see, when you look at it here, if you can pick that up, but the actual part on the left, the lines, the, the raised lines don't line up there. The left side is higher as you look at it. The left side is higher than the right. So I'm going to have to remove these pins again. So I'm going to come in with my uh, snips and just remove these pins like so. And then again, sand the stick, just lightly sand the surface over. I'm not going to worry about putting any pen, pen or pencil on this one because I can see they're very, they're very flat. And they go together lovely. There's no one, um, there's no big undulations or anything. So now when we actually put them together, I can actually get them together, hold them. The discs inside will help me align them, align them like this, if you like. So um, and we can see there now that I can line them up beautifully and they'll line up on both sides. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just put these, these discs in. So I'm going to get my extra thin. 
<clears throat> and this disc here with no feature on it at all. This one is part 36. The one with the four lumps on is part 37. So I'm going to put that one in there. Just place that in and hold it with my finger and just get a dab of extra thin in there. And that's it. Okay. And that's in there like that. And I'll just quickly check the fit of the other side to make sure it's all going to be okay. And yeah, everything's going to line up. And then what I'm going to do is line those, line those ends up like so, and then just push that inner up to make sure it's lined up. Because I won't be able to get in there once that other end is in. Although what I have noticed is I will be able to glue this together like this, like that. So I can glue from the inside and I can just drop this one in after, like so. So that's what I'm going to do there. Um, so I may as well glue these together now, hadn't I? So I'm just going to get those together, line them up, put some extra thin down the inside. I'm going to use plenty so I get a nice solid joint. And the fit looks quite good, so I don't think I'm going to be using uh, very much filler at all. And then I can just slide them around, get them lined up. Like so. And using what fingernail I've got, I'm just going to slide it across. And I'm looking for a step in both directions or no step at all. So going that way, I've got a step there. And I've got a step there, so that's fine. So that's that side lined up and this side is the same. So that's good. So these uh, 50 year old moulds are holding out well. So that's gone together beautifully. And also if you notice I didn't bother removing the sprue nibs because I've got to clean the seam up anyway. There's no point. So actually probably the best way to do it is to push it down on a flat surface. And that'll make sure it's all lined up and true. And there we go and I'm just going to put some more glue inside just to make sure I don't have a dry joint and the beauty of the extra thin it will capillary into the joint so if there's any gaps then that's uh, okay and I'm just going to push that up in there and then I'm going to put some glue on both sides to make sure that's glued in solid like that there we go so that's that together and that's where the rocket nozzle goes and this is the top end where the um, the command module is going to sit which is the uh, the cone that comes back to earth it's crazy that you look at these five jet en these five rocket engines here and the bit that comes back sits on top of that <laughs> so it's the, the actual one part that comes back is smaller than all five smaller than one of those five mad Talk about green. <laughs> so uh, there we go. So they're glued together now, all nice and parallel. And what I might actually do is rescribe these uh, lines that are on here, which will make it look a bit more effective than having um than having a. Uh, a sunk line although I've noticed here on the instructions it's painted in white so that that'll actually look quite good anyway even if I don't scribe it at all so it could just be a case of masking and there we go we've got some little um the little uh, what they called I can't what they're called now, but these little tiny jets, they, they position it correctly and keep it all in its correct uh, orbit. And you can see on here, um, let me find something to point with. If you look on here, make sure we're focused, you can see that here we've got the, the jet exhaust there. But here it's like a, it's faded out. Again, this is one of the restrictions with moulding. So what we'll do is we're going to cut that off and shave that away so it looks like that side. 
Um, what I'd like to do is cut them off and replace them, but I'm not going to bother. I'm sure we can buy upgrade sets that do that, but uh, I'm going to save all that for the 96th scale one. But there we go. Yeah, when you when you consider they've 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 done a really good job. When you consider this, when this um when this mold was made to make this kit, the seven forty seven wasn't even flying. So it's uh it's that long ago, and I'm going to leave that out for now, just in case I do get a dry joint. I need to put some more glue, and it saves me having to put any glue on the outside. Um, in fact, no, I won't worry about that. I'll put some glue on now. Just to make sure we don't get a dry joint, I'm just going to very gently brush some cement along there. Dry joint is when the glue hasn't capillaried all the way along and you end up with a, a line in the paintwork. Now the problem is, this is white plastic. If it was grey plastic, when you sand it down you would see a white line. That's how, that's how a dry joint appears, as a white line. But obviously on a white plastic you're not going to see... A white line in white plastic so yeah we need to make sure that uh, it's well glued so there we go so that's that little bit done so I'm going to leave that now to go off as well and then we'll do some work on the seams but I've got to do the other side of these um, these rocket motors first I've done I've glued one side but not that side you can see how they're sort of misaligned. I've got to pull them around and get them lined up and make them fit together better. And this side is glued and going off now. Okay. It's been about uh, 12 hours since I glued these now down the one side. Um, so they're all set and everything's solid now and they're all lined up lovely. And this side's still not joined. So what we've got to do now is get these parts aligned and basically join them together. Um, and get these ribs aligned and make sure there's no step. So what I'm going to do is actually physically halt them and then put a dab of super glue, just one dab of super glue to lock them in place and then I'll use the plastic cement to weld them. Um, for those of you that don't know, you're new to modern whatever, super glue is a great product it's, but it's extremely brittle. So if I glued this whole joint with super glue um, it would stick together instantly and it would be great but if I gave it a squeeze or tried to pull it apart it would probably just crack and split so um, super glue is a great product for locking things together quickly but it doesn't have the weld action that your plastic cements do so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I've got some super glue here on a Pringles lid which is a great way to uh, just have your super glue. A lot of people put a piece of masking tape or, or a post-it note or something down and then you put your elbow in it or you put your parts in it. Pringles lid like this. Um, drop a super glue, it'll dry in there and then you can just peel it out. And I'm using what's called a glue looper here. Um, excuse my fingers guys, I'm doing some painting trials so that's why they're dirty. Um, you'll see that video. So basically this thing is just a stainless steel photo etch strip and it's got a loop in the end so when you put it in the glue it kind of picks up a, a blob of glue and then you can accurately just put it in place so what I'm going to do is these parts are sitting fairly flush anyway but I just need to give them a little tweak just to get those ribs in line and then I'm going to take a drop of the super glue and just dab it on on the inside like so and that should just lock it in place like so okay now I'm not using it as a weld action I'm just I'm not using it to stick it should I say I'm going to use the plastic cement to give it a weld action um, and lock it together permanently but this is literally just to hold it while I um, while I get it all aligned and it's not drying particularly quickly I don't know why so what I can do that's level I've got here this is a um, a kicker pen uh, you get these from uh, littlecars.com or littlecars.co.uk or modelingtools.co.uk and you can just brush that on like that and that will kick it and get it to go off straight away 
and uh, it's better than using an aerosol and getting it everywhere and and stuff so there we go that's glued in place now so that can just sit like that so I'll do the same on the other four and then um, then put some Tammy extra thin in there and that'll be them all glued together in fact what I'll do is I'll do this one on camera so you can see put that lid on very tightly so I'll just put some Tammy extra thin in this joint give it a little squeeze together in fact I'll do it from the inside it'll be easier I'm putting plenty of glue on because I want to make sure it doesn't split or crack or whatever and there we go I can give that a squeeze in fact I'm going to put a little clamp on there to hold that together I have to use a clothes peg just to hold that together and this down this end is being held together by the super glue but if I want to I could put a rubber band on there um, after the glue's gone a bit so I'll just get a rubber band out with my drawer now here these cheap things these you buy in the supermarkets in the UK they cost about a pound for a bag of a uh, thousand of them and they're awful they're garbage um, my advice is don't buy them they uh, the biggest problem with them is if you if you have like a fuselage of an aeroplane that's warped so you're using rubber bands to hold it together while the glue goes off you come back to your model after an hour and you'll find the, the rubber bands have all pinged off and your fuselage is separated so uh, yeah don't bother with them um, but for something like this they're absolutely fine and if you notice I let the glue go off before I put the rubber band on don't ever put the rubber band on and then do the gluing because the glue will run underneath it so there we go that's that done so I'll do the other four now and then I'll be back so we've completed step one and basically we've got our five um, stage one engines and uh, exhaust nozzles all built up there I'm sure I'm using the incorrect terminology please correct me in the comments down below um, and as you know as well yesterday we um, we built up the uh, service command module command service module whatever it's called and uh, that's going off now that's all lovely this piece here which is where the um, which is where the lunar module will uh, the uh, sorry the command module will sit um, that uh, that's ready to go in I'm going to deal with this seam first before I do anything else and I think this line here um, it lines up on one side and then not on the other so I'm going to have to rescribe that line I think and also I want to do the work on these um, these little trim I can't think what they're called now they're little, they're little basically jet engines that fire little bursts of um, they're not jet engines they're little rocket motors that burst little bursts of uh, flame just to correct it so if it's if they want to set it into a spin they can just blast off a couple of them and it will set it into a clockwise spin like so um, in space and it will just keep going out forever because there's no uh, there's nothing to stop it so um yeah we're gonna sort those out so uh, that's that so um, um yes yeah, so let's have a look at um, how we're gonna correct these because you can see on here I use this glue looper as a pointer as I showed you just now it should look like that but it's actually because of the restrictions of molding it's like this so what we're going to do is I'm going to use a, a curved knife blade and I'm just going to go to the right position on there and then just cut down into the plastic and just to uh, remove this molded on lump that makes it look inaccurate and just slightly shave that away until we get it flush with the rest of the uh, the body like so and there's our first little modification to the kit I don't intend to do anything uh, like aftermarket add-ons or anything all I intend to do is just as I see things that are obviously not correct then I'm going to change them um, if for instance there's 18 grills there and there should be 21 on this particular version then I'm not going to worry about things like that um, I 
can be a rivet counter at times. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of people think I'm a rivet counter all the time, um, but I'm I'm not I'm not rivet counting on this one. And I'll do the same on this one here. We've got that moulded on area. Just gonna cut in like this, and then gently go across to remove the uh, remove that lump. And there we go. So I'll carry on and do these. There's another one there, another one there. And then I'll, I'll see you when I've done them. There we go. And I think you'll agree, they look a whole lot better now with those, those moulding flashings gone. And you can see that I've used my magic marker again, just to sand down the, um, the areas where those lumps were. Now, because this is white plastic, doing seams and stuff is extremely difficult. So I'm going to give this a very light coat of some grey paint. Um, I'll probably use some uh, some Alclair primer on it. Grey, it's just basically grey cellulose based primer. And then I'll be able to see the seam and see what I'm doing. And I'm also going to rescribe this line. Um, the other problem with being white plastic, extremely it's extremely difficult to film it and show you guys what I'm actually doing. So uh, I'll give this a quick coat of um, grey primer and then we'll see where we are with this seam. Right, so that's uh, that's painted now with um, Alclad grey primer. It's a cellulose based product so it will have etched itself into the plastic nicely and we can see that we've got a we can see the seam there. It's not too bad. Um, there's a little pit mark there. Um, yep, yeah, that's where there is a um, one of these uh, location pins and there's another one there. There's a little sink mark there. And if we now get our, this is a very fine sanding sponge, it's very soft and flexible. And I use this because on round surfaces, it doesn't produce a flat. And I'm not putting any pressure on it at all, I'm just very gently rubbing. And this paint actually hasn't gone fully hard yet, but I'll carry on anyway for the purposes of the video. Um, and we can see that the... Immediately we can see our sink mark there is apparent because it's got the uh, the paint in it still, and we can see that we've got a raised edge around the uh, around the seam line. Now, because this is going to be painted silver, we really want to make sure we get this seam nice, and we want to make sure we get this dealt with before we build the rest of the model because this is the one that's going to be the most important and we need it to look perfect in preparation for the silver paint um, because the if there's a seam there believe me on silver paint it'll stick out like a sore thumb so we can see we've got an edge here on this side and we're going to just get rid of it by lightly sanding um, what I don't want to do is sand too much because what we'll end up produce, do, doing is producing a flat spot. So we'll end up instead of it being circular, it'll be. I've used this rubber band to show you. It'll be. A, it won't be a complete circle. It'll be like it'll have a flat area, um, sort of like that. So what we need to do is make sure we keep it round. We can't get emery paper and go like this because we'll, we'll eradicate all the detail. We could rescribe all that, but. Um, that's not really uh, what we want to be doing and basically those those marks on there are just um, are going to show us the demarcations for the white paint on the silver areas so I will probably sand them down a bit and reduce the uh, reduce their definition so there we go we can see now that where we need to um, look at putting any uh, filler medium or anything you can see we've got where the gray line is there that's where it's low and where the white has been rubbed away that's where it's high so we basically want to fill in the low areas and then I'll use a different color primer and rub down and make sure that we uh, get it all nice and um, seamless so I'm going to use Mr. Surfacer for this and um, this is the product I use Mr. Surfacer 1000 fantastic product you can use it painted on, let it go off, you can sand it down. If I wanted to repair some, some say some errors in here, what I could do is paint it on, let it go off, and then get a cotton bud, soak it in alcohol, rub away, and it will leave the Mr. Surfacer in the imperfection or the groove or whatever is I want to fill, but it won't damage any of this by rubbing down. So um, 
yes uh, it's a fantastic product if you haven't got some get some it's well worth it it's uh, really worth having so i'll get some painted on there now and i'll be back so the uh mr service is on there now it's in those two sink marks as well as you can see so that can um dry for a couple of hours and then i can get to work on sanding that down now what i want to do is look at the inside of these nozzles and you can see here when you look in there they're a mess i mean if you're not too fussed about what they look like uh, particularly if your model is going to be stood on end then you're not going to see them but me being me and me being a fussy modeler i like to make sure things are, are, are basically right so how are we going to sort out that now we've got all four seams in here we've got mismatch on the chamfer on the edge um, then we've got the, the the negative of this um this molded on ridge around the outside you can see in there and then we've got our mold pin lump sitting there as well or sorry our assembly pin lump so basically they're a mess there's also numbers in there um you can see we've got a one on that side and a two on that side and on some of them we've got some ridges around the um the actual mold seam as well in fact some are worse than others um yeah so <clears throat> basically what we need to do is is tidy up the inside of these particularly if you're going to have your model on its side um displayed as you would with the saturn that's in Cape Kennedy um, or in the Kennedy Space Center should I say um, then you, you need to do something about this now inside here is all sorts of ribs and stuff and when you look up inside you're obviously going to see a hole so you really want to make it look a lot better than this so what we're going to do is get our sandpaper like this I've got a this is a piece of 240 grit and I've made it into a cone I'm just going to put it over the end of my finger like that, push inside and just basically sand away. And then straight away we'll see where the high areas are. And we can see that that lump there where that assembly pin is is high. So I'm just going to just gently carve that away just to get rid of that. And then we can go back in again and just using the sandpaper or the uh, wet and dry, should I say, just rub away until we get a nice sort of basically smoothish surface and then we can put loads of filler in there and then just keep doing this until we end up with a nicely smoothed out sanded area no we didn't we don't want to put loads of filler in there because it'll take forever to dry and it'll take forever to sand down and then it'll look different and everything so the thing to do is to make a new cone inside so I've got a piece of 10,000, 0.25 millimeter plastic card here. And I've measured this, and this is roughly 25 millimeters inside diameter. So if we're gonna make a cone to go inside there, it needs to be a 75 mil diameter cut out. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a circle cutter here. These are available on Amazon and all sorts of places. They're very, very cheap. Um, there are better ones on the market. I've had this for years. I've never used anything else. It's absolutely fine. Um, it's done. It's done a great job for me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off on the smallest setting, which on this one is um, is a 10 millimeter diameter. This isn't radius. This is diameter. So 10 millimeter diameter. So I'm going to start. In fact, to economise on my plastic card, because plastic card isn't get, isn't getting any cheaper these days, I'm going to get a pencil. And I know that because this is 25 mil 3.14 times that will give you the circumference so it's going to be roughly 76 millimeters diameter so if i mark a line on here which is in fact i'll leave that i won't do that corner because i'll leave the 0.25 it gives me easy um recognition to what it is so if i go say 38 millimeters in or say 40 millimeters inside there and mark a line and then 40 millimeters this way as well and mark a line so that's where the center needs to be so i'm going to go to here and then cut out just make a mark for my 10 millimeter circle in the center and i've just showed, straight away i've shown you that one what you should do is do the big circle first because if you do the small circle first you'll have nothing left you won't have anything to put the compass in so i'm just going to use the circle cutter to cut out a circle of 76 millimeters diameter okay 
so that's scored so I should now be able to snap that out I think I'm going to go a bit deeper with my scoring or even cut right through to be honest I think the blade needs a bit of a sharpen but you get the idea what I'm doing is just basically going round and taking out that circle there so now I've got a circle 76 millimeters diameter I'm just going to clear that edge where I didn't go deep enough there we go so there we go that's our 76 millimeter circle with a, with a 10 millimeter circle in the center so what I'm going to do now is draw a line from the center out okay and now what I need to do is go 120 degrees so here's my 90 degrees in fact this is a I need a better square don't I for this really but anyway so there's my 90 degrees like so so now I need to go 30 degrees from that line like so I need to make sure I stay on the center like so I mean the other thing you could do of course is use your compass and go like this make a mark like that make a mark and there you go there's your 120 degrees so but I'll, mark, I'll darken that a little as well okay and then using my compass again I'm going to pick up on that edge make a mark there and then make a mark there and there's my next one and then just to check I go like that there and that there there we go I'm going to get three out of one circle so I'll draw the line down there okay and then using the the rule and my scalpel I shall cut here and here the pencil out of the way and I shall also cut here oops holding the wrong piece of plastic there we go so now I've got my three there and I should be able to just break that center piece out yeah, I'm gonna to need to do some work on that one so now what I can do with this is roll it around on itself into a cone yeah and one way to do that is to pull it underneath a rule or underneath an edge and it will start to curve up and then make that into a cone and you'll see that when I push that into that nozzle it will fit in there beautifully if you push it down in enough it will fit in there and it will get rid of all our seaming work and all we've got then is that one seam at the center to deal with and that's it job done okay what I found works a lot better um, if you cut the center out to a 30 millimeter diameter so a 50 millimeter radius um, and then pop the the part in squeeze it together push it down as far as it will go and then just mark a pencil line and then slice off the little bit you don't want so basically that piece there I've just sliced away because this isn't actually a true cone it sort of goes in steps so I've discovered that the best way to do this is to actually do this have a 75 mil or 76 millimeter OD 
a 30 millimeter inner diameter and then all you've got to do now is push it down in and that all you'll have to deal with is that small seam there and then we'll blend this in area around here with some Mr. Surfacer and also it would help if you've got that join to be over, the, over where that um, where that uh, assembly lug is there and then you won't have a great big gap behind it to fill in so if you get it so it's like that like so just use the rule just to push it down so you can see and then you've got that lug in behind there so you haven't got a great big hole to fill in behind that gap. right there we go so now you can see that in there that that's glued in and I think you'll agree that looks a lot better than that does so um I'll get the other four done okay, now. Right, just to recap, so uh, so we're clear. I'm going to cut out a 76 millimeter diameter circle, like so. I've been using this to cut out some much thicker plastic card for another project, so I think the blade needs sharpening, but um, it will go through. I've used it on two millimeter and everything, so and basically with the two millimeter you're just looking at making a deep score and then snapping it. And the trouble is with this thinner stuff, it just wants to tear rather than snap. Okay, so there's our 76 millimeter circle. So now I'm gonna draw a line in the center, a mark there, sorry. Actually, no, I will draw a line because it will show me where I need to cut. Um, so there's a line there. And now using the compass, I can make a mark there. Make a mark there. And then I know that that's where I need to draw my second line. And then... Again, do the same thing, and then that is where my third line needs to be. Okay, so that's that's where I need to do my cuts. Now, in the centre, we need to cut out a thirty millimeter circle, so a fifteen millimeter radius. circle cut at the center we save that in our box because we always we never know when a disc is uh, it's going to come in handy and then I'm just going to use my knife and cut out one two three like that snap that off, snap that off and there's our combs ready to go in and then I'm just gonna give that a quick pull under the blade just to put a bit of a curve into it just to help and then get the sandpaper sand the cone out shave off that plastic lump in there which is here just because it's a bit of a bulge we don't want that sticking out there's also a couple of lines in there and also it's worth looking on some of them there's a lot of variation in the thickness of the plastic side to side and you get quite a big step it's not on all of them it's only on some so you want to make sure that it's fairly smooth and then just push the cone down in and get it so that the bottom corner butts up like so like that and then I'm just going to make a pencil mark where that needs to be and then take the knife and slice that off like so and then I could just push that down in and like I say make sure the join is over that lug and then you haven't got a great big gap in the back to fill in I could just 
push that down in like so. I think it'll, yeah, it stays there on its own, look. And I'm just going to push this side down to line those up so they're level on the top, which will make the uh, whole exercise of filling and sanding and everything a lot easier. There we go. It's decided to come apart, so that's because the camera's on. If the camera wasn't on, this would have been done hours ago. It would have put itself together. And then holding it in place, I'm just going to put some Tamiya Extra Thin there. Don't go mad with the glue because the uh, plastic card will basically just dissolve and wrinkle up on you. So put some around there. The capillary action will pull it around the top edge. And then just put some on the bottom. And there we go, that's all five of them done. Um, just sort of thinking out loud, really, this is the beauty of these old, older uh, kits. Um, one, they're very cheap. Uh, I mean, this is £23, this model, and for something that stands, you know, three foot tall, um, it's it, it's a bargain. When you think, uh, you know, a large 30-second scale bomber is upwards of £300 these days, you know, this at 23 quid is a bargain. And also, it's a good way of um, honing your skills, because you've got a lot of old you know mold problems to deal with and everything you've got the seam issues and then you got you know for the for a couple of quid for some plastic card and a compass you know you can and you can make massive improvements like this uh to, to the old kit for for you know next to no money and you end up with a model that's yours you've created it it's not something that's you know like a, a beautiful new tamiya kit that you you put together you know if if you built a tamiya model kit a uh, 30 second scale Spitfire and you didn't paint it and I built a 30 second scale Spitfire and didn't paint it and we put them next to each other on the bench they'd look exactly the same but when you're doing stuff like this your model is always going to be different than someone next to you so it's and it's also quite satisfying um, so we may as well go on and look at how we're going to fill it so so what are you doing in situations like this I make this called this stuff called sprue goo um, it's called sprue goo although it's not actually made with sprue uh, if you look at Phil Flory's website, he will tell you that you should use styrene and you shouldn't use sprue. Now, for some some instances, I use the styrene, like this here. You see this says HK. This is HK models sprue melted in Tamiya Extra Thin. The reason I do this is because HK plastic is very hard. Um, and if you use anything else, it's when you rub it down, you tend to rub away the, the, the sprue goo before you start to rub away the, uh, the HK plastic. So um, if you look at my Lancaster build, you'll see that I did the repairs to the, the errors on the wings. And I used this so that I didn't get any sinkage or any, anything like that when I was actually sanding it down. But all this is basically is pieces of scrap sprue, like the pieces of scrap card that we had from there. Chuck it in an old bottle of Tamiya Extra Thin. And what you're looking for is a consistency, something like that. So it's it just strings so you, you that's what you're looking for and all i'm going to do is just brush this on there we oh. go and that is that so once that's gone off then we can get that um sanded back and we'll see how it looks and there we are that's all uh, all five of them now and they've got the sprue glue around them give that a few hours to go off um and then uh, and then start to sand it back um, and in the meantime I can be getting on with doing some other assembly work uh, this here the um, the command service module service command module wherever it is I, I keep forgetting um, it's probably ready to sand no not quite it's, it's gonna tear so hey guys we've moved on about 12 hours now and um, the sprue goose started to go off nice well it's gone off nicely uh, I've actually put some filler in here. I used um, Mr. White Putty. Uh, it's not white, it's yellow. But um, I've used that in there in that big gap because the uh, sprue goo sank quite a lot. So I've just brushed some in there, then wet my finger and smoothed it out. And, um, and now what I'm doing is just giving them a rough sand. And uh, I've got my cone of 240 grit that we used previously. And what I'm doing is just forcing that cone down inside and then just sanding it around like that. Keep changing the position, turning, and then 
you can get a feel for where you are. What you're after is feathering out the sprue goo on the edge here. So um, you can see that it needs more pressure on this side to get that, that smoothed out there. And this will take a little while to do, and it's a little bit laborious. But at the end of the day, it's worth it. And if you want to see what these things look like, um, I've just seen a video on YouTube and it's Saturn V walk around. And it, the, the, the Saturn V that's at Cape Kent or at um, space, the Kennedy Space Center, should I say, uh, a guy actually walks around and he does walk right behind it so you can look straight up in these nozzles and they look very much like this. Um, there is a, a line around the middle, but it's nothing like the line that um, Ravel had in there. And uh, you'll see that they're actually um, fairly smooth inside just like this so uh, I think this is worth doing particularly I mean it's a must do it's a must if you're going to um, have your model led on its side on a stand like the one at um, the Kennedy Space Center is I actually uh, saw that when I was about um, 15 or 16 I think and uh, yeah I must um, I must get all my old photos out and have a look I know that I've got a photo somewhere and in the background I've got a picture of me stood there in the background my dad my dad took the picture God rest his soul and um, yeah he, uh, he took the picture and in, in the background is the um, the 747 with the space shuttle on the back just uh, just lifting off so that was um, that was quite impressive to see obviously uh, my, my father knew what was going on all the time and um, he obviously arranged for us to be there at just the right time. Right, another few hours later and after a second application of filler and rubbing down, you can see that we're getting there now and the uh, the inside of the nozzle is starting to look like a nozzle instead of a, a rough old lump of plastic with a little bumps in it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm practically there, I can still feel some bridges in there. It doesn't need to be perfect, um, it just needs to be as good as you want it to be really. I'm going to try and get this as smooth as I can. So what I'm going to do now is give a very light coat of some black paint in there. Just a very light coat of flat black. And then when I rub it with, with, uh, with, the, with the cone of paper, it'll, it'll show me where I need to put some more filler. So what I can do is just go around, I might even use Mr. Surfacer depending how deep the areas are. And then... Um, just let that dry and sand it back again. So uh, I'll get some paint on there and then I'll show you what I mean about the uh, the rubbing it out. Nozzles are all painted now, so you can see they're all matte black inside. And you can, I mean, you could if you wanted to, you could leave it like that. You might be happy with that. I mean, it looks a lot better than uh, than it did. But um, what I'm going to do now is just with this cone, I'm just going to clean it off a bit. This is the one that's the most worn out. So just make up the cone, push it into the bottom and then spread the top out and then just a few turns like this, nothing too much and then that will show me where the low spots are now I need to do some more actually because the idea is to get most of the black paint off and then where the black paint remains is where we need to add some more filler um, yeah so we need to rub that down a lot more but we can see here that obviously I need to put some more filler in here this area here you can see in there and these area on the sides just they'll blend out I think when they're sanded and this area here I need to add some in fact if I rub this some more I think those areas will become more pronounced so you can see what I'm talking about and as I said in the beginning if you're an advanced modeler there's probably nothing in this video much that's going to that's going to wet your whistle if you like um you, you you probably know all this already so uh but for beginners this sort of stuff is um is great little tips to pick up um because i don't think a lot of people on youtube show stuff like this but so this is just stuff i've picked up through the years i'm an engineer uh, rolls royce time served rolls royce aero engines so um, yeah, I got a sort of they gave me a kind of practical mind, so I think about things practically. So there we go. So uh, 
Now I know, know where I need to add some more filler, I can do that and get rubbing down again. Right, back on the uh, command, 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 command Support Module, CSM. Um, working on this seam, and all I'm doing is just gently rubbing away with this soft sponge, as I said before. What you can do is take a smaller, harder sponge, and just sort of stay at 45 degrees, and don't stay in one place, um, otherwise you'll find you'll put a flat spot on it. But um, there you can just sand away. The other thing you should be careful of is when you get to the end, you don't want to be doing this and sort of putting a chamfer going in. So um, yeah, just keep it flat, and then you, you'll see the, the high and the low spots straight away, and uh, your primer will take care of the um, of the low spots. You can see in there I've got some Mr. Surfacer in that sink mark there, and if you remember, I have that tiny sink mark there. Um, that's so uh, that's uh, that's dealt with now. Um, I've also noticed I've got some more work to do with these um, what are they called attitude attitude generators or something. They make it turn or change the attitude of it. Um, so yeah, they're because of the restrictions of molding and bearing in mind this is such an old model. We need to uh, sort of just basically if you look on the side here, I'm not sure if the camera's going to focus on it, um, but if you look on the side here. You can see that the, the edge of the, this this edge is sort of a lot harder than this edge. This edge is very soft; it rolls off. So I'm just going to sort of clean that up and and add some. Um, try and just make it a bit more of a feature. Um, and there's something else I want to do with it as well, which is in real life they are kind of cones that that are on the side. They're they're sort of if this is the side of the. Um, command support module these things are on the side like that whereas they're molded like this so to make them look more like they're part of it or round um, i'm just going to scrape in there with the knife and what i'm doing I've, I've got the very sharp point of the knife and i'm just going in and just scraping in the corner and what that will do when it's painted it will look in fact, I'd like to show you, I've got a piece here from my Lancaster. Um, here we go. This bulkhead here, now obviously this is a one-piece moulding, and these parts, these tubes that run up, this is wood-grained and waiting to, for green paint. Um, these tubes that run up here, they were obviously just moulded as, as sort of along, up, down, along, because you couldn't mould around the corners. So what I've done is got a blade, and gone in and just scraped and scraped and scraped and now you can see if you look at it end on if I can get it to focus it actually looks like round tubes um, on a wooden bulkhead which is what it actually is so that's the sort of effect you're after but this is obviously a much smaller scale so it's more difficult to achieve working on this um, seam obviously I've eradicated this line that goes around here you can see and there's another one on this end so I'm going to replace that by scribing it. And scribing it is basically scratching it into the surface. And as you can see, as with all old kits, it's a raised panel line. Um, I'm going to turn it into a recessed panel line. Now, I could get Dymo tape, wrap it around and scribe it. Um, but I might slip and the Dymo tape might not be perfect and everything. So the easiest way to do it is I've got this end sanded nice and parallel. And I've got this um, scribing needle here. And what I've done, I've worked out, if I use a piece of 0.5 millimeter plastic card and then just literally hold the, the pin against the, the side of the model and just rub it so that the pin is trailing. Don't try and do this so you're, you're digging in because what will happen, you get loads of chatter and you get that digging mark. So it's turn it like this so it's trailing and all I'm going to do is just scratch the panel line back into the plastic. Now it's very difficult to pick up because at the moment I'm going right over the uh, the raised detail. You can hear that chattering sound that's not good you want it to be nice and smooth. Um, if you do get a rough finish on there what you can do is go around afterwards with a piece of um, with a brush of Tamiya extra thin and that will actually smooth it out. And what I've done, I've actually gone right over the panel and you can see there. I don't think you'll be able to make that out. But um, I'll just keep going with this. 
I mean, I think it's only a paint demarcation anyway, but it's going to add a little bit more interest to the to the finish. There we go. You can kind of see it here. Maybe if I um sand and stick on it, it start to sand, maybe it'll become more prominent yet. So you can see there we've got a scribed line, which is scribed right over the the raised line. Yes, yeah, so what I'm going to just keep going, make it a bit deeper, and then I can um, then I can get rid of the rest of that raised line. So I've got those lines all scribed now, and for this one I just stood it on a piece of plastic card with the scriber on a block. And all you do is just get your your, your needle or whatever it is on something solid. You don't want that moving around, so you just hold it down, and then you get plastic card or whatever cardboard just very very stable very flat and then you just hold it against it and turn it exactly the same so what I've done there I've removed the raised panel lines um, within these areas here these panels so basically we've got the whole raised paneling there still but the here is um is scribed so that's uh, that's going to look a lot better uh, than having a raised panel line which just disappears on the seam line um, it also enables me to rub that seam line down all the way instead of having to um instead of having to uh you know work around the uh, around the seam so that's much better now once that's got a coat of primer on it we'll see just how good or bad it looks now something i have noticed and this is going to be fun because this doesn't want to go in there we go there we go wow first time on camera um it's it's loose in there it's got a, a big gap around the edge so what i've got here is a piece of five thou plastic card um, I tried 10 thou, it's too thick, and this is 22.2, whatever it is. I've just worked it out, it needs to be 67 millimetres long. So I'm just going to cut this off to 68, just in case my calculations were wrong. And it may butt up. And then I'm going to get my rule, and hold the rule down. Just pull the plastic card through the rule, like so, and that puts a curve in it, which will make it a lot easier to get in here, he says. So I think what I'll do is wrap it around my finger so it's too small, and then put it in and let it go. There we go. I'm going to just sit on top of that flange that the... Um, That the end panel sits on and then just go around and I should be able to just mark where I need to cut it there we go so I've got a mark there now and I'll go just just to the back of that mark and then cut that end off and now this should fit in there beautifully like so and it should butt up together there we are you can almost you can hear that click in and there we are that's in there now so i can chance give it a little nudge down yeah because i moved it it jumped out it's because it's five thou resting against five thou it doesn't want to stay there there we go and now if I just get a tiny drop of extra thin and when I say a tiny drop I mean a tiny drop because this 5,000 plastic card will just dissolve with extra thin but that's glued in there now well at least one side is and then I'll just Another tiny drop of extra thin on there, and that will hold that side in. Okay, so that's that in there. And now this should pop in there, lovely. Um, yeah, so if you uh, get that in there nice and snug like that, now you haven't got a gap anymore. So now we can take our extra thin, and I'm just going to run around the edge here. We need to make sure we get the whole thing glued in around that edge because um, when it sets we're going to slice that off and sand it all back nice and smooth. 
so that's in lovely there and then I can just take a drop of extra thin and put it in around here and then just leave it leave it to go off there's no orientation for this or anything in the kit so I'm not sure about the actual orientation of where the end of these cylinders should be but um, it's uh, it's in there I mean if you're gluing your model together and not having anything coming off I wouldn't worry about it but um, I think I'll be gluing mine together up to this stage and just having the uh, the um, the command module coming off because um, I think it would be great to show people the uninitiated that you know out of this huge model this is the bit they kept <laughs> this is the bit they came back to earth so um there we go i would love to have it all so you can show them where you open it and get the lunar module and everything out but it's very toy like very um very old-fashioned with the hinges and everything so i'd rather not do that i think i'll probably save that for the 96 scale one Let's see what that looks like, see if I can make it less toy-like. So there we go guys, that's that's the command support module pretty much done. I need to uh, let that glue dry off now and trim that. So we'll put that to one side. Now these exhausts are still drying. So I think what I'll do is I'll call it a day there for part one of this video. So what have we done? We've glued together our um, exhaust by removing the pegs um, and then one side at a time. If you go back at the beginning, you'll see I did that. Plenty of glue. Make sure there's plenty of glue on these. You want them really absolutely solidly glued together. And don't forget, the main thing is remove those ejector pin marks from inside there. They stop it going together properly. Um, and then glue them together one side at a time put some pegs on them, rubber bands like I've got here, and then inside to clean them up, I've put some plastic card in, as you know, a bit of filler, a bit of sprue goo, and we're away with them. So they're all looking lovely, um, depending how far you want to go. And the other thing is, I noticed when I said about you can, uh, there's a, a video on YouTube and you can actually see the guy who walks around the back uh, and you can look up in these. Um, your coarse sanding paper, if you're just going to use it like this, it actually puts lines in it you can see there and that's actually quite authentic so um yeah don't try to polish them out leave them and hopefully when we spray the the metallics and stuff in there it'll pick up on it and look quite good um so that's that and and basically we we've done the uh, seams on here again removing the the alignment pins uh, because they made it go together wrongly. We've scribed the lines, cleaned up the seam, and that's ready for a coat of primer now so we can have a look at what it looks like. But I'm gonna wait this wait for this five thousand plastic card to dry first and then uh, and then um, get this uh, get this trimmed up. So thanks for watching guys. Um, please give me a like if you've enjoyed this. If you haven't then please don't give me a dislike. I don't like them. Um, if you uh, haven't subscribed already, subscribe. You'll see me building this and you'll also see very shortly, as soon as it arrives, I'll be doing an inbox review of the new wear um, 196th upgrade set for the Revell kit, which is uh, a pretty big set. It's 100 quid worth, so I, I should hope it's a big set. Um, and we've also got the, uh, the, the Revell kit itself to, to review as well. So um, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.